happy birthday. Give yourselves a big round of applause for being here and supporting us for a year. Woo! We've got bucket loads of poets tonight. Probably got a book full actually, or a CD, which we're sort of recording as I speak, which is the first poet who I can see lurching at the bar at the moment with a very big ginger beard. And now I think Peter Merck, the big ginger bearded Peter Merck, is going to come up here and regale us with something fabulous. Big hand for Peter. Will this one do? Hear me in the back. Plenty of light. Lovely. First thing a poet has to do is adjust the microphone. Beautifully done, I thought. Um, well, I'm not actually going to read any poetry or spoken words. I'm going to read some prose myself, but... I will read a poem with someone else, and it's a good old 18th, sorry, 19th century shipwreck ballad, and I'm a big fan of that sort of behaviour, so please bear with me. This is by Jennifer Harrison, who'll be reading here maybe next month, I think. She will be, one of the finest poets in the country. The Wreck of the Walter Hood. Cut from highland trees, I was built in Aberdeen and made into a clipper queen, singing shreds of Nordic wrecks from that laced bodice of Dartmouth port. Through storms unseen and breaking, still I sailed, full swing past Gabo's light and headed north, towards Jarvis Bay in New South Wales, where devil's spit kicks out upon the reef Barara. I raced before a southerly storm, thick black fog obscuring any signs of shore, Aladulla was blown away, by my calculation, we lose our way each time we plunge the waterfalls of April, upside down, sea moan screaming higher. Dear Lato, my captain, steer me well. Deceive me with your confidence in northern lands where Poseidon reigns. Here Pleiades, the Milky Way, climbs the sinews of Gitjar's moon. No spirit I know, no God save me, can pierce the fire that snakes upon the reef Barara. So drum the wind, kilt the clouds, fly my thousand tons of Dow. Did Lato run the last of ninety sailing, sailing days toward the harbour of Sydney? The rain falls hard across these decks, and I must empty, empty them and be quick. The shallow sea begins to smother me. It hunts for pre pretty prey, and the wind unchecked does surly pound my breast upon the reef Barara. My cabin boy has snapped in two, the wave dog snarl of butchering blue. I spill as though I'm birthing blood, bagpipe hull now ripped and splintered, wine, beer, pickled pork are bobbing from my belly, sharks with mossy fins of white and bronze. Only the circle of the men who try to swim for shore. Dear Lato, where are you, my captain? Have you two abandoned me upon the reef Barara? There's another... Ten verses, which I'd forgotten how long it was, but um, that's Jennifer Harrison. Um, now, I'll read some of my gear. Uh, I've been writing a, a poetry-driven uh, road movie novel, which I read uh, some bits of last time I was here. And it's, virtually, it's a journey from Melbourne up into the Mallee country and back through the Grampians and home lickety split after we get to the Grampians. So... We get to Sea Lake, and my accomplice is a Virgo Libra cusp, so he's not sure about whether he likes a clean dish or a cleaner dish. Thank you. With, you're not one of them, are you? Get out. Off you go. Uh, this is called Sea Lake, which is a dying town beside a salt lake. And we were going up there to do some poetry, and he was going to paint some pictures. North to Sea Lake, the country alters. Forest and scrub, you can almost feel the presence of the Murray still away north. The town used to have trains running through, but it still has a railway hotel with a $5 lamb roast. Once we had booked our rooms and negotiated our wonderfully gravy sodden collations, we asked our patron if we could watch Seinfeld. He didn't give a bugger and I should go for my life. BTV8 spliced in sheep dip ads and the announcement of a big Fletcher Jones sale, while well, we grinned, we'd already shopped. 
We grinned over our blackened tans, having already bought up the op shop down the road with dead men's trousers. Despite it being the famous masturbation episode, Matthew, my cohort, couldn't concentrate on the show about nothing. His mind was on tomorrow. His bohemia graphite sticks were fairly twitching in their black Euro trash pencil boxes. His mind was full of salt lakes and desolation. A few blokes were loitering over their beers, doing their footy tips. Uh, they're a little more cynical to life up here when the conversation, uh, when the conversation starter weather is back in town. I didn't even know who was playing, um, but I mumbled through my beer and ordered another. I rang a friend over in Swan Hill. She runs the art gallery there. Matthew was rather, rather crabby about it and said we were here to make the journey not to socialise. What's the point of the journey? He went, he went to bed early. The hotel manager let me use his study and um, TV room. I asked him if he got SBS. Apparently not, but he was a fan. And he said, I do, Indira, and I do, I would. And, and I said, that's a poem. And he said, no, those are words. The reality would be a poem. Good night. I stayed up and watched the uh, Playboy bikini special and drank green cans and tried my hand at a sonnet. The hotel, thank you, the hotel is... Is a one, the hotel is a once swank Victorian pile replete with balconies, private parlours and vast stairs surmounted with coloured glass depicting sheaves and rams. Moving about the halls, I could half hear the commercial travellers and governesses bound for outlying stations whispering, the sounds of their footsteps in the settling and the unsettling of the building as a chill came down the sun-wide staircases. Was that too boring? Is that all right? Mm -hmm. but I keep hearing voices, but it's some sort of reverb. That's so probably me. Uh, thank you very much. The <laughs> incomparable Stephen Merrick. Peter, how many years does it take to grow a beard like that? <laughs>